these kind of landscape used to support uh, an exorbitant amount of smaller mammals. Um, we, we call them the critical mass mammals. So we're talking about uh, batongs, bandicoots, hair wallabies, um, about this size. And they were all taken out by the foxes and the cats and uh, already a long time ago, we're talking over a hundred years ago, that those species started to dis uh, disappear from here. Now they only exist in small pockets in Victoria. Now they actually maintain the health of the fungus underground. So without them, the fungus ecosystem is declining and then the fungus have an impact on the trees, etc. So another good example is uh, emu. So we don't have any more emus here in central Victoria. Um, we know from elsewhere in Australia where they still thrive and still exist in large numbers that they play an essential role in dispersing seeds through the district. We know from the Dane tree up in Queensland that uh, the cassuary, which is the, the, the cousin of the, of the uh, emu, uh, without the cassuary there, um, that forest would decline severely because all the large fruit plants um, depend 100% on the dispersal of the seed by the casuary. So without casuary, the Dane tree forest will be in serious trouble. So that's why so much effort over there goes into the conservation of the casuary. Here we don't have any more emus and you see that the large fruited plants like quandongs and aromophilas are declining. Invasive species in Australia is a major issue. Invasive species take up the space of native species, robbing animals of food and habitat. This is Apuntia robusta, originally from Mexico. Came here via the Mediterranean. Italian and Greek immigrants planted these around olive groves as a hedge plant. Major invasive plant. When we first bought this reserve here in 2004, we had at least 10,000 of these the size of a, of a Toyota Hilux twin cap ute. 10,000 of them, uh, they need to be injected. So whole armies of volunteers used to traipse through these hills here, stabbing cactus. They're usually city people and they love roaming the hills, uh, killing weeds. It, it, um, they feel they've achieved something and they have. After um, 10 years or so, this reserve is um, virtually cleared of these cactus and we definitely do not produce any seed anymore. So no wheel cactus can escape from this, this reserve. So we managed to get on top of this. So over there we have Patterson's Curse, that purple plant. That comes from Africa originally. It tends to monoculture, pushes all grasses and other herbs out of the way. So we tackle that one next. We've already cleared huge sections of this reserve of that particular weed. And that's how we go about it. Um, we manage our land really intensively for the first 10 years or so, really hammer those weeds. And what you see is you immediately get a, a rebound to native species. So we're giving the advantage over the native species. Over there you see a river mint just, just there below there, a river mint with those red flowers, that would not be there if the cactus was still around. 